Moving on to section 6-5, steps 1 to 3 are all about riveting in that top bracket, the uh, rudder bracket into the rear spar. Doesn't take very long, there's actually only a few rivets, um, but I would make a serious piece of advice here and that is if you are going to uh, do this, make sure you do the two little inner holes first. I really think that uh, for this particular section, the instructions weren't good. Um, so to help clarify things, rivets that go through the top rear spar and the doubler, but not through either of the hinge parts, use 4-4s. Four the rivets that go through the rear spar, the doubler, and the hinge parts use 4-5s. Uh, uh, there are eight of each, by the way. That's another important part. The, the docks kind of in, don't really imply that, uh, or rather they, they tell you to use eight, but then they only show four little arrows, uh, which is, can be confusing. And if you fail to uh, do those middle ones first, what'll end up happening is you'll put the two hinge parts in, get those guys riveted in, and then lo and behold, you can't do those two middles and you'll have to drill out uh, one of the hinges like I had to here to you know put those two little rivets in. Um, Again, as I say on my blog, uh, make a plan, then execute. Don't just execute first, which is what I did here. In the next part, I was riveting the front spar doubler uh, to the front spar, and I used a backplate riveter, you can see here, and it was just trivial. It just went off without a hitch. Um, so the instructions were great, and it was easy. Once I moved on to step three, uh, it was time to rivet the skeleton together. I was super excited, and I got started putting things together here. It went to drill out uh, one of the first holes at the top, and I noticed that I had bent my drill bit. I think I've ruined that drill bit. And that's why we have multiple drill bits, because sometimes you ruin them. I was super excited because, um, and, and in my opinion, this step was huge, not because it was, you know, it took a long time, but rather because for the very first time, it actually felt like I was making an airplane. Uh, all these things were coming together and, you know, it got me excited. It got me, it got me, uh, in the mood to make an aircraft. I mean, this, you start to see these pieces come together and it's like, holy crap, this actually looks like an airplane part, which, uh, that's a pretty good feeling. Doing this middle spar was a bit awkward, though. I kept having to kind of get down on the ground a little bit. My, uh, my workbench there is, it's actually three feet deep, uh, but, you know, I've got stuff against the wall. And, and really, in all honesty, it would probably be better if I pulled it back away from the wall so I, and, and cleared off the top so I had full access to everything. Uh, and I may do that in the near future just because I need, I need a little more space. I need a little more uh, uh, horizontal space to throw stuff down and, and uh, not really care what or how it looks, you know what I mean? It just, uh, working area is important. Now one mistake I did make here, um, actually here in a bit, right now that's me just riveting the front spar on, but uh, eventually I will rivet the in spar to the front spar without having put the front nose rib on. Whoops. So I'll have to drill those out and, and put them back on, but you know, they worked out perfectly. It looks great. Uh, after the fact, I'm not going to bother showing it here just because it's a heck of a lot of video. And finally, uh, the next couple seconds is just some super fast video of me doing the rest of it using, um, the time-lapse mode on one of my cameras. I'm not sure I like that mode because it gives me very little control over, uh, the video itself. So I probably won't ever use that again.